Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of My Beautiful Chaos with Misty Fitch of Fearfully Made Ministries. We are finally back with another episode and a whole new season of My Beautiful Chaos. And today we have a guest. We have my wonderful husband, Matthew. Hello. I'm the only one who can call him that, except for his mom. Everybody else calls him Matt. And we have actually recorded several times before this, but we just can't seem to get it the way that we want it. But today, we're actually just completely changing gears, shifting gears, because unless you are under a rock, you know that every second somebody is talking about the coronavirus, this new COVID-19. So that's not what we're going to talk about all day today, but we're just going to start there because how worried first, how worried have you been about this whole thing? Really not that worried. Not at all. I mean, I've had my, my moments where I'm like, Oh, let's, let's not do this. And let's not, let's not do that. But for the most part, I mean, from what I've read, from what I've heard and what I've seen on, you know, different social media outlets and the news, it's a little bit less than the flu, but it gets blown out of proportion because of the media. Honestly, I, I'm not that worried about it. I mean, as long as you're doing your due diligence is washing your hands, coughing into your elbow, and staying away from sick people, I really <clears throat> not that concerned. And just about quarantine. It. It's I mean, I and I get where you're coming from and we're trying to stay quarantined, but mm-hmm. my reasons are selfish. So I'm gonna be hundred percent honest. I don't want to be out in the world right now, and I don't want the world to come to me because we have six weeks. that is true. And almost five days, a little more than five days, for our honeymoon anniversary. (laughs) We have been planning this for a year, and we are coming up on our five-year anniversary, and we never took a honeymoon because part of being in a blended family means you have to sacrifice. It's not all about... I mean, one of the things I talk about in my newest book... Which, by the way, my first book in the trilogy study, Beautifully Blended, just came out a few months ago. I think January, right? It came out right at the end of January before we went on a family vacation. Uh, And I'm working on the second one, and then there'll be one more after that. So I'm really excited about all of these. So a lot of our topics are going to be blended families for a while, just because that's what I'm working on in my books. One of the things in the second one that I talk about often, I mention it probably more than I should, is it's not about you. So, Matthew, I love you, but it's not about you. But it's also not about me. It's about the kids. When we co-parent, when we parent, when we, everything we do, we need to think what's the benef- what benefits the kids, right? Mm-hmm. Um, especially when it comes to co-parenting and things like that. But when we got married... It wasn't about you. It wasn't about me. It was about us. It was about bringing two families together. And I love that about our wedding and our marriage. Everything was about bringing the families together. So because of that, we couldn't think of a good enough excuse to spend the money on us to go on this extravagant gift when we have four kids all of a sudden. You went from two, I went from two, and now we have four. Mm -hmm. So we just didn't do it. Plus, it's hard to want to spend time away from your kids. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's important to pour into our marriage. And so finally, after five years, we get to take that vacation, my dream vacation. I don't even, had you even heard of Turks and Caicos before me? No. It's (laughs) my dream. Do you know where I first heard of it from, I think? I probably shouldn't say this on our podcast episode. (laughs) <laughs> so one of my guilty pleasures for lots of years is the Real Housewives of Orange County. So that's what it used to be. And then they changed it to Real Housewives of the OC. And I watched that. And a few years in, they took a girl's trip to Turks and Caicos. And it was gorgeous. It was beautiful. It was perfect. So it became kind of my dream place. So for a year, we've been planning it. And so that's what the Corona thing is for me. It's a selfish thing because we Mm -hmm. have this trip coming up and I don't want to, I want this trip for me and you and I want it. So I don't know what's going to happen if we have to change it, but I'm sure it's going to work out fine. It'll be fine. But that's the selfish part of me. It's not even getting sick and being afraid of this illness. It's I want to be able to travel internationally. Yep. 
and I want to not be sick so that we can travel internationally. And I don't want the kids to be sick because then there's no way I could you. travel. No, it's just, I don't think I could travel if I knew they were homesick with something that's that unknown. But I don't know. So anyway, that's where we are. And that's kind of what we want to talk about today is we've had questions on how do you have a strong marriage when you're in a blended family? Because you're not, when you're in your first marriage and you get married, you don't have kids. So you have all that time to get to know each other, study each other. And then you can say, hey, it's time to have kids. But we started off with four. Mm -hmm. And so we've never had that time to ourselves. So we do understand that. But what are some, what's some of your advice on how to keep the marriage strong and how to get to know each other and how to date each other? Because wow. I have something that I'm, uh, I specifically talk about in our book. But I want to hear from your side. How do we keep it fresh? Mm -hmm. How do you still date? What's your advice? Give a guy's point of view to another guy. Oh, come on now. A lot of the advice I might say may not be necessarily what I do, just because... <laughs> oh, now I'm really curious. Just because, you know, I... I'm very curious now, <laughs> so you might as well say it. I don't know. I mean, you've always talked about when we were dating, how I pursued you. Whether it be big things or just the really, really small things. Oh, I had to interrupt you. I have to interrupt you because I remember... But this was even before dating, and I would be really tired or something. And I loved the, um, oh my gosh, what are they called? From Starbucks. The refreshers. I yeah. loved the refreshers. So you would just, you worked from home, so you were able to go and get a refresher and surprise me in the middle of the day at school and bring me mm -hmm. a refresher. And my students were all like, uh, he he's likes a, you. He's a good looking man. No, that <laughs> yeah, that's not what like, they're saying. But they're like, oh, <laughs> he likes you. Nobody's just going to leave from the middle of the day to bring you a five hour energy or a candy bar or a refresher. But no, that, but that's kind of what I'm talking about. You know, when you start dating, you pursued the guy, the girl, you know, to try to make a presence known, to know that you're interested. It's, but when you're married, you can still, I mean, a lot of times it's not that way because you're sidetracked with getting the kids to baseball, football, basketball, soccer, dance, busy with work, busy with yard work, and everything. So a lot of times you forget that you think you're too busy for that. But, you know, the one thing that I, I try to do, and it, again, it doesn't always happen, but I try to be more intentional on dating my wife. And if anything, just showing that I appreciate her. Like she said, you know, I'll come by with a refresher back when we were dating. Come back with a whatchamacallit candy bar when we were dating. Which our, our roles have changed now because now I'm the one home and you're right. the one that goes so, off to work. So it is different. It, it is. It's, a little, more, it's a little more difficult for me to do that now. but And I can't really do that for you because it's not like you work well, right yeah, down the street. I, I, work, I work far. but. It, we could still be done because I mean, there's that time where a couple of weeks, about a month ago, where I was like, "Hey, we're going out." I loved that. We've and, never done that before. You just right. said I want to so, take you on a and, date. And that's what I'm trying to say. It, it, in order to pursue and keep things fresh, you have to be intentional on on what you're wanting to do and just to show your wife or show your spouse that you know you care and that they're important to you. Yes, I work in I, I work far away. You're here at home with the kids and you homeschool. And you do things around the house and everything else, but I need to also show you the, the appreciation. I come home with a, you're not big on flowers. Every now and then you like flowers. I mean, but, I like having them around the yeah, house. Yeah, but you don't like flowers necessarily, but yet you would surely enjoy a what you would call it candy bar. You would, I'm not you would, for a long time. I've been you eating would, but, well, but you would eat it. I mean, you would think. Oh, I would thank be you. so mad at you for bringing that to me because you'd be I'm cussing. Trying. You'd be cussing me as you're eating it. I you hate know you. that's not nom, true. Nom, let's nom. <laughs> let's correct that because you know that's not true. You I don't you be giving like me that. the evil eye the entire time Possibly. you're eating it. Okay. Possibly. But yeah, but no, I think some one of the, you know the advice that I would give is you know to be intentional and just it's the little things that matter. You know that's really all I can I, say. I think, because we hear all the time, we have heard every excuse. So when I tell you right now, if you are in a blended family, if you're married, like you don't even have to be in a blended family, but you can give me all the excuses in the world. But I will tell you that there's no excuse big enough to take the place of not being intentional. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like if you really want it, you're going to make it happen. You're not going to make excuses. So, although we're focusing on blended families, this can be for any marriage mm -hmm. that exists. 
a lot of times once the kids come into the picture, it is easier to just push everything aside and be all about the kids, but you have to be intentional mm-hmm. about your marriage. There is something I'm going to say about it, but you look like you were wanted to say something, so I don't want to get too far. No, I just, I just, you're talking about, you know, if there's something that you want, you're going to make it work. Right. You know, that, that applies to anything in life, whether you want, you want that raise, you want, you want to go to the store, you want to buy this, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you can't afford it. You're going to do the things you can do in order to to purchase that. You want to lose weight for your yeah. upcoming trip, then but you then see you're the chips in the washing call it. We're yeah. not going to starve ourselves. I mean, but... Yes, there's, everything is work. That's why marriage mm-hmm. is work. Mm-hmm. Whether it be your first time or your 20th time, marriage is work. In order for the marriage to work, you have to put work into it. I mean, I tell the kids all the time, like, if you want anything in life, you have to work for it. And I think what the key word is that we're not saying is prioritizing. So you prioritize. That's what we're not saying, but that's what we are meaning. Mm -hmm. You have to decide what are your priorities. Your kids are priorities. Your family is priority. Your marriage is a priority. So we hear a lot of excuses on why they can't, why you can't date while you're in a blended family. You don't have enough money. You don't have enough time. We've heard it. Whatever you have in your head, we've heard it. I promise. But here's the thing. One, dates don't have to cost money. You can do a lot of things that don't cost money. And I have had dates where the kids go to bed. It doesn't even matter if it's the pizza that's left over. We can have it on the good china with the candlelight after the kids go to bed and it's our date. We actually had had, uh, sausage, cheese, and crackers outside in the back patio one night with the lights on as a date night while the kids were asleep. I remember lots of sausage and cheese dates. That's like our thing. I love sausage and cheese dates every t- every once in a while with a little glass of wine. We and Grace Anatomy, we're good. We have we have had that date. I my favorite that was like that was the one up in the game room. Yeah. Where we did Christmas lights and we had it set out like a picnic because it was supposed to be a picnic, but it rained that night. Yeah. But it was free. We rent. We actually went to the library, and a lot of public libraries do this. They'll have date night kits, and they had a picnic basket, and it had all these fun things. It was free. You just mm-hmm. check it out like a book. But that's being intentional. That is being intentional. But what I was going to say is on a blended family, when we hear that you're co-parenting, that every kid has another parent that is also a part of the kid's lives, And that means that kid is going to see that parent. So when you are telling me that you have an ex who is co-parenting with you, but you can't find the time to date your spouse, that's probably one of the times that I'm the most blunt because that is actually an advantage that we have. It's a disadvantage because you want all that time with your kids. But instead of being in a pity party, and I was the world's worst, Mm -hmm. my kids would go over to their dads and I would be almost in a depression. I would lay in my bed. I didn't know what to do with myself. I just watched TV and ate and slept. That's really what I did. I wanted to cry. My kids weren't here. So I get it. But then I realized, well, that was, that started before we ever got married. I think I still continued that into our marriage, but then I realized this is an advantage we have. We didn't have that time to get to know each other and really study each other after marriage. So when the kids are gone, let's take this time to go out. Even most of the time, it's not even go out. Sometimes we'll go out, but sometimes we stay in and watch a movie Mm -hmm. or play a game. So you just, just like Matt said, you have to be intentional. Quit making excuses and make time. Mm Mm-hmm. If it's five minutes, it's five minutes. Make time. Well, it's like you said before. You know, before you got married into a blended into a blended family, you had time to date. Mm-hmm. So nothing's changed except for the fact that you guys are now Good married. Good point. So that still, is, still take that time and date. I mean, that you, is one of the first questions I, or the first things that I say when somebody says they don't have enough time. I say, how did you have time to date? Yeah, you, built like a, it, you built a relationship. Somehow how you did had you time build, to date. Yeah, exactly. How did you build a relationship if you didn't have time, but yet you got married? 
Right. If there's time to do that, there's time now. So I do get pretty blunt when it comes to that because I, that's one thing I don't tolerate very well is someone who keeps making excuses for why they <clears throat> can't date when yeah. there are so many other options and so many other, just you have to be intentional. But real quick before we finish it out, and then if there's anything else you want to add, we used the word priority a while ago. A lot of times there's a misconception on what that means the priority in a marriage and the priority in a family. And it's the spouse comes first, the kids come second. And especially with a blended family, I have seen some very, very wrong ways of thinking. Would that be the right? Like just, it's Mm -hmm. just a misconception. So I'm not like saying there's anything bad about it, but when there are problems with the kids and the new spouse, for you to say, no, my my husband comes first. No, my wife comes first. Sorry that my kids are getting hurt. Sorry that they are really in a desperate place. My new spouse comes first. That is not God's design. God did say to prioritize marriage. And what he meant when he said to prioritize marriage is exactly what we're talking about. Do not push your marriage to the side when your kids come into play. In a blended family, the kids actually were first. So you need to be talking to your kids all while you're dating and that whole process Mm -hmm. and show them what a healthy marriage is, which is to date your spouse, to talk to your spouse and get input from your spouse. But it's not a healthy thing to say, I'm sorry, kids, what you have to say doesn't matter because my new spouse says something different. Does that make sense? Am mm-hmm. I like I don't want to really go too deep. No, I, I, it's perfect sense. I just want to I mean, make sure we we clear up that misconception of what prioritizing marriage is and spouse coming first, kids coming second. I think there's just a whole misconception of that. The only reason we talk about prioritizing marriage is when you get married, you and your spouse become one. Mm-hmm. So you too become the authority over the children right but you never push the children aside for the marriage and you never push the marriage aside for the children because now it's the whole family unit so would you say does god's design for marriage and family fit in a blended family yes absolutely i absolutely. agree absolutely i mean yes and we can talk about that at another time because that is something that way well my qu- my question to the listeners would be why wouldn't it be very good. And you can go to the website to post your question or your or your comment on why not. You can just send an email to mybeautifulchaos at email.com and you can ask those questions because I would love to hear those of you who are uncertain on whether or not blended families fit into God's design for families or any questions regarding blended families because we do want to address this a lot in the next few episodes and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining My Beautiful Chaos this week. If you have any suggestions for topics or questions you would like answered on an upcoming episode, email me at mybeautifulchaos at email.com. See you next week.